Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Just a Tip with Dr. Vic. My name is Dr. Victoria Hartman, and I am the executive director of the Erotic Heritage Museum right here in Las Vegas. How are you guys today? Today is a good day. It's a calm day. It's kind of stormy here in Las Vegas. It's overcast, and it's one of those days where you just want to stay inside in front of the fireplace. Well, <clears throat> on days like that, sometimes it's time for some fun. Or it's a day of fun or a morning of fun, connecting. And so what are we going to talk about today? Well, what are some of the things you like to do when it's stormy and rainy outside? Hmm? Well, some people like to have sex. And a lot of them get to have orgasms. Cheers. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about orgasms. We're going to talk about the science of orgasms, which I'm not sure that we've covered just yet. <clears throat> orgasms, <clears throat> excuse me, tend to be, um, at least scientifically, something that we're still very interested in figuring out. Okay. And um, there was a study, actually, that I was particularly interested in, or not a study, but there was an article um, that was done a little bit ago in 2017 by a colleague of mine who I'm hoping to have on the show. I've actually invited her onto the show, and she's trying to put it on her schedule. Um, and she actually studies the, neuro the science of orgasm. She has a lab. Her name is Dr. Nicole Prousey, and she has a lab in California, and she studies orgasm. That has got to be one of the best, you know, postdoctoral internships I can imagine. I mean, as a sex researcher, wow. That's something that, you know, Kinsey tried to do. It was great um, in terms of its, you know, um, exploring sexuality in a lab, um, I think is just it must be fascinating work. Okay, so um, this article was from romper.com. And the title of it is, here's what happens to your vagina as you orgasm. Now, it did reference a study. Um, so this article was done in 2017, where they uh, interviewed Nicole Prousey. And then uh, the study that was referenced uh, was from two 2016. And I'll post it in the comments. The whole versus the sum of some of the parts. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. <laughs> Toward resolving the apparent controversy of clitoral versus vaginal orgasm, socioaffective neuroscience and physio, and I'm sorry, psych psychology, page six. Um, oh, not page six, uh, publication six. Is that page number really three, three, two, five, seven, eight? I'm not sure that's right because I have never seen any kind of a magazine or publication or journal that has 32,000 pages in it. I could be wrong, but <laughs> I think I might want to check in on that. I'm not sure that was typed up right. <laughs> That's a lot to read. Anyway, I'm a little giddy today. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> so, okay. So, all right. Well, what does Dr. Nicole Prousey have to say? Orgasms are per, uh, for people with vulvas are something that many people are rightfully fascinated by. This topic has quite literally been studied at length. Still, there are plenty of things we don't know. As Dr. Prousey says, the orgasm is a reflex, meaning it is a cascade of events that will always occur one after the other. Did you know that? Did you know that orgasms are a cascade of events? Well, let's dive into this a little bit. However, she says, and um, Dr. Prousey is a, psychophysiologist and neuroscientist, we do not know how orgasms are triggered. Hence why we have lab research, right? All right. Doctors and researchers have figured out some things though. As you become more and more aroused, it's clear that your body may elicit the sexual response. There's more blood flow to the vagina, clitoris, and labia minor, inner lips, and they all begin to swell, um, says uh Stacy Rybchin, she's the founder and CEO of Adult Toy Shop, My Secret Luxury. Your own vaginal lubrication increases as well. All right. Well, I want to know about the science. Tell me what the research is, is showing. 
Let's see. So a little bit of an overview. When your pleasure continues to increase through the excitement phase and into the plateau, your vagina swells, your breathing and pulse quicken, and your muscles tense. Then you get to the climax of the sexual response phase, the orgasm. However, the in-between is what Dr. Prowsey finds so compelling. What does she have to say? We believe there's a unique state of, I'm sorry, there is a unique state between excitement, which is one of the stages of orgasm or arousal, an orgasm that we are currently working to ca- characterize. It appears that this state involves a decrease in sympathetic tone, an increase in alpha brainwave activity, which may indicate a separation from the effortful attention towards the brain state that ultimately a- or allows orgasm to occur. In other words, you're having somewhat of an out-of-body experience as you approach orgasm. It's that moment just before orgasm where you it's, it's almost like uh, the way it's been described is you lose a sense of everything around you. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet you become one with everything. So good description here. Somewhat of an out-of-body experience. The orgasm is the angels singing, clouds parting moment you've likely been waiting for and working toward. It's true that the shortest phase of your body sexual response cycle, that it's the shortest uh, phase, but it's also the pinnacle of total and complete erotic pleasure for many people. Not all, many. During an orgasm, your vagina will feel likely feel like it's pulsing and the intensity with the intensity varying for everyone. At orgasm, the pelvic musculature contracts rhythmically. For those of you that orgasms, I'm almost willing to bet you know what Dr. Prowse is talking about. Contractions. Usually these are 8 to 12 contractions that start 0.8 seconds apart, then become further and further apart as they stop. You know, when I was reading this, it reminded me of a, a, almost a reverse of labor contractions because labor contractions, they start far apart and they go closer together. Well, some of the same musculature in the pelvic region and people with, you know, uh, vulvas and vaginas, they, that, that same um, musculature has something to do with orgasm. So for that's interesting that it's almost reversed, you know, from labor. Um, let's see. She explains that it's not so much the vagina that's doing anything special at the time of orgasm. It's the muscles surrounding it and supporting it, doing all of the contracting. Again, think to labor contractions. Additionally, Prowsey says that women who've gone through pregnancy and delivery may have weakened orgasms for a while. With events that damage these muscles or their supporting structures, such as during childbirth, some women report these contractions feeling less strong. Okay. That also... (coughs) Um, has been reported in women who have any, or people with vulvas and vaginas who have any, have had any kind of surgery, um, in the pelvic region. It could be partial hysterectomy, hysterectomy, cancer surgery, um, any kind of pelvic floor surgery. Orgasm has been reported to sometimes decrease, sometimes increase, sometimes involve pain or eliminate, eliminate pain. So there's a lot of interwoven musculature and blood vessels at, that are um, intimately involved with orgasm and just pelvic pelvic floor strength and health. So it's not just pregnancy that can change orgasm. It's also surgery or any kind of trauma to that area. All right. Um, okay. So let's talk about that study that was cited here. The experience of an orgasm differs greatly between individuals and according to a 2016 study, which I mentioned earlier, it can also change throughout your lifespan. For Prowsey, who is currently studying female orgasms at her research institute, Liberos, one of the biggest challenges is women misreporting orgasms. Our main challenge at the moment, Dr. Prowsey says, is that about half of our female sample reported having orgasms when they could not document it occurring physiologically. She says, it may be that some women misreport their climax even in the lab when they know we are measuring, so it's not clear why that's happening. Um, intensity of stimulation can sometimes, while not necessarily mimic orgasm, be similar to orgasm. And you've heard that when people talk about, well, I had a vaginal orgasm, I had a clitoral orgasm, I had a mind orgasm, I had a full body orgasm. I would there, I think, yes, there is a physiological orgasm. It has contractions, etc. The pelvic floor muscles contract, what, what have you. I think there's also, you know, and we see this often with folks who um, have lost 
um, sensation in their lower body due to like a spinal cord injury, they still experience orgasm. Sometimes it shifts away from their genitals to somewhere else. So I'm not sure what the research says about um, orgasming percept orgasm perception, uh, but I think they can coexist. You know, the physiological orgasm and psychological orgasm. More research is needed, of course. All right. So according to Planned Parenthood, one out of three women have trouble reaching climax through sex. As a scientist, Prousey says, this is important to measure. She cares very much about whether contractions actually physically happen. However, she's also a therapist. True. I care 100% about whether you're enjoying what you experience as a climax. Science is a wonderful mystery. So true. <laughs> and source of curiosity. And I hope will not be used to cause shame or worry about the nature of what women enjoy or anyone, I think. Um, whether we have a, a physiological orgasm or we perceive ourselves having an orgasm, you guys know me, I think pleasure is central to that conversation. Yes, the science is important and it's also encouraging people to have pleasure in a way that works for them and that doesn't shame them for it. As long as everyone's consenting, pleasure is totally okay to pursue with yourself or others. All right. Getting to orgasm can sometimes be, sometimes be a mystery. After all, everyone is turned on by different things. What makes you orgasm might not make the next person clim climax and the next person might hardly orgasm at all. So um, I'm going to put the study <clears throat> that's referenced here um, in the comments, like I said. But I think what was interesting for me reading this article um, was, um, that Dr. Prousey was looking for this state between excitement and orgasm where it's uh, this out of body experience. I would love to know what the neurophysiology is of that, um, that experience. Like what is going on in the brain that takes us sort of, it, it, it simultaneously takes us out of our bodies, but makes us really in tune with our bodies at the same time. I want to know what neuroscience says about that particular state. We also see, and I didn't pull up a study on this one for this episode, but we also see that during um, the orgasm phase and post-orgasm phase, and sometimes pre-orgasm phase especially, that we see a reduction in pain sensation too. Does that have anything to do with what Dr. Prousey is reporting here? I want to know. Let's do the research. Let's do the science. Hopefully Dr. Prousey will. All right. So. That's our episode for today. Um, because there were a lot of different sources here and I was actually looking for um, a few different things, um, the editing took a little bit longer because I wanted to make sure I put everything in here. And throughout the episode, you know, you'll see citations and whatnot here next to me. So um, with that, so I apologize for the delay in getting you the video. Do you like mandarin soda? I love mandarin soda. If you haven't tried it yet, seriously, try mandarin soda. It's super yummy. All right. So that's going to be it for our episode today on Just a Tip with Dr. Vic. I hope it was educational, stirred your curiosity, and I hope wherever you are that you are enjoying a day of pleasure and fulfillment. And I will see you in just a few days on Just a Tip with Dr. Vic. <laughs> Bye.